When I heard Fallout was getting a TV series, I was excited. Then I heard it was going to be canon, which made me very nervous. I've spent years learning the lore and creating videos based on that lore, so to have the possibility of it changing and the videos no longer being accurate is worrying to say the least. So to make myself feel better, I've tried my best to explain how everything could work without any contradictions. With that said, let's take a look at the story, which is in LA, and the main characters. First, there's Lucy, a resident of Vault 33. Her father, Hank, is the overseer, and she has a brother, Norm. Lucy, along with the other vault dwellers, have spent their entire lives living in the vault, but something has changed, and now Lucy is being sent to the surface on what was originally called a rescue mission. But sources also say her mission is to find an artifact. We also know her father is eager to change the world for the better, so perhaps the artifact she is trying to find is the key to completing her father's work, a theme familiar to those who may have played Fallout 3, leading me to believe the artifact is a Garden of Eden creation kit, or GEC, a fully self-contained terraforming module capable of creating and sustaining life even amid a desolate nuclear wasteland. This seems like the most obvious thing her father would send her to find. Although due to living inside a vault, she is unaccustomed to the harsh new world and will have to adapt if she wants to survive. However, after setting off on her quest, she encounters a man called Wilzig, who is unlike the other survivors. His clothes are clean, he's well spoken, and he also may be the owner of the dog, which is another mystery I'll come back to in just a moment. Apparently, Wilzig will guide Lucy on her travels and teach her how to survive in the new world. Secondly, there's Cooper Howard, or the Ghoul. Cooper was alive before the Great War and has lived for over 200 years. He was the lead actor of the box office hit western film, The Man from Dead Horse. He was also a vault tech spokesman and could be seen standing in front of Vault 4, which I suspect may house a functioning Gek or whatever the artifact Lucy is searching for. Cooper was also a husband and a father. We do see him with who we can assume is his daughter riding a horse towards LA as the city is destroyed, and this is most likely the moment Cooper became a ghoul. We know some humans undergo the ghoulification process when exposed to extreme levels of radiation. Moira Brown and the vault Tech rep, for example, so it's quite possible Cooper was also immediately transformed into a ghoul rather than slowly turning into one. By 2296, Cooper is known as the Ghoul, a ruthless bounty hunter with a mysterious past. This is the part I'm looking most forward to watching, and I'm excited to learn what Cooper had to do to survive and how he came to accept his new life as a walking corpse. The series will also show the world of pre-war America through his perspective, seeing as he witnessed it firsthand. Thirdly, there's Maximus, a squire in the Brotherhood of Steel. The strange thing about Maximus is he's referred to as a squire, but that title is only ever used to refer to children within the Brotherhood. However, it could be referring to his role rather than his rank in reference to him being assigned to a power-armored knight while his actual rank is that of initiate. Maximus believes in the nobility of the Brotherhood's mission, which is to bring law and order to the wasteland, which is another mystery I'd like to address, but for now, on to the dog. Lastly, there's CX404. I'm calling the dog a main character as he does get his own poster, and it does seem like he's going to have a much larger role than we're led to believe. While we don't know that much about CX404, his name is really unusual and could suggest that he is in fact a synth from the Commonwealth, which was a popular theory in Fallout 4, although instead of CX404 being a synth, it was dog meat. The Institute, as we're well aware, made synthetic animals, crows, brahmin, and gorillas, so it's entirely possible that before the Institute was destroyed, the scientists created synthetic dogs, one of which could be CX404. If so, then perhaps Wilzig is an institute scientist, or a synth. This is purely speculation and could be entirely wrong, but I do like the idea of Wilzig escaping the Commonwealth after the Brotherhood destroyed the institute. 
It's difficult to predict where the show will take us, but Jonathan Nolan recently said the characters are trying to track down an artifact, so I assume that is what will bring these four characters together. My guess would be the artifact is a Garden of Eden creation kit, or Gek. Lucy's father wants it to create a settlement for the Vault Dwellers, similar to Vault City in Fallout 2. Cooper's relation to the Gek could be the fact that he knows where to find one. I suspect the location is Vault 4, and to redeem himself for all of the bad things he's had to do to survive, he will help Lucy retrieve it showing that despite looking like a monster, he still is very much human and has his humanity. Maximus, on the other hand, wants a Gek to create a birthplace for the next generation of humans, with which the Brotherhood of Steel will share their technology and knowledge, finally fulfilling their prophecy. According to Todd Howard, the events of the Fallout TV series will be a part of the official Fallout canon, for what it's worth, Bethesda has maintained some control over what's happening within the story to ensure it still works within the already established lore, which is a big relief, but I still have my doubts because there's a lot for the writers to consider. The first concern is the location, and the absence of the New California Republic, or NCR. The Boneyard, as it's now called after the Great War, was founded by Vault Dwellers, emerging from the LA Vault in 2092, which led to many survivors returning to the city. These survivors then founded Aditum, the fenced-in suburbs, who in turn founded gangs like the Regulators, the Blades, and the Rippers. Others also came to the city for business, like the Gunrunners, but it also caught the attention of someone much more powerful. The Unity will bring about the Master Race. Master! Master! One able to survive, or even thrive, in the Wasteland. As long as there are differences, we will tear ourselves apart fighting each other. We need one race. Race! race. One goal. Goal! Goal! One people to move forward to our destiny. Destiny. In 2155, the Master learned the location of the Vault, took control, and turned it into his new command center. Then he instructed his super mutants to find other vaults, taking the inhabitants to Mariposa, a pre-war military base, to be dipped in FEV. Those that survived joined Unity. His human followers, cultists led by Morpheus, built a monumental building on top of the Vault known as the Cathedral. The cultists were then renamed as the Children of the Cathedral, the Master's religious movements that penetrated settlements under the guise of free healthcare, all the while convincing the settlers to support the Master. Although thanks to the Vault Dweller from Vault 13, the Master's plan never came to fruition. By 2189, the Boneyard became one of the states of the New California Republic, and Aditum became known as New Aditum. With the NCR in control, the Boneyard became much safer, the buildings were renovated, the streets were cleaned, the roads were guarded, and people were given jobs. The current law suggests that that is how the Boneyard stayed for just under a hundred years. But in 2281, there are signs the NCR is heading towards an uncertain future. The first is something that Raz, an NCR soldier, says about the Boneyard. Ain't much to tell. Grew up out west in the Boneyard. Heard of it? <laughs> yeah, not many people have. Wasn't really a good place for kids, you know. I joined up to get out. My family's still back there. This could be nothing, but if enough children decide they don't want to live in the Boneyard, then they're going to leave as soon as they can, reducing the city's future workforce and leaving the Boneyard with an aging population that will one day be too old to work and too old to pay taxes which becomes a lot more serious when you pair it with what Thomas Hilden, the director of the Office of Science and Industry, has to say. Not yet, but our government understands the value of proactive thought. Our studies project an imbalance between production and consumption. Or, for a layman such as yourself, not enough food, too many mouths to feed. Mass starvation in a decade or so. If this issue was never resolved by the NCR, then by 2291, the NCR could be struggling to feed their population. Five years of starvation would likely lead to the NCR reducing their size, withdrawing from places like the Boneyard in favor of maintaining power over places that mean a lot more to them. 
If this is the case, then I imagine the Brotherhood, the NCR's natural enemy, would want to take advantage of the situation and claim the city for themselves. With Maxon's reformed Brotherhood, the Elders in the West could have requested Maxon send a small force to take control, or to restore peace, as they say. I'm sure there are many other reasons for the NCR no longer occupying the city, their fiat currency collapsing, causing the resurgence of bottle caps for example, which is something we do see being used in Philly. And that's really important because the NCR's bank, where all of their money is printed and signed, is in the boneyard, meaning they may have evacuated the city due to their money no longer having the same value it once did. They could also have suffered from internal conflicts caused by the canon ending of Fallout New Vegas, both of which may have attributed to their absence in the trailer. I'm sure the reason will be explained, I just hope it's a good one. Even better, they could actually be in the show, it is early and the trailer didn't exactly reveal everything so there is a lot of speculation going on. Speaking of Philly, it's a post-war settlement built entirely out of scrap metal. It's a brand new location that we haven't heard of yet, and it does look a bit like Diamond City. I've also heard people say Megaton as well because of the plane and the supply sign, but a settlement in LA made entirely out of junk could be Junk Town. Only its name was changed to Philly when the mayor, or whoever is in charge, changed the name when they rose to power. Or it genuinely could be a new settlement that we haven't yet heard of. Now, it's time for the big issue, the Brotherhood's mission which is to bring law and order to the wasteland by any means necessary. This line has brought some confusion, but it really shouldn't. The beliefs of the Brotherhood were shaped by the experiences of Roger Maxon in the aftermath of the Great War. At first, the Brotherhood focused on aiding survivors, but they stopped doing that when they realized that the collective knowledge of humanity was in danger of being lost. As such, Roger dedicated the Brotherhood to the preservation of technology and human knowledge, collecting it in order that the Brotherhood might one day become the catalyst for humanity's rebirth. So, their original goal was to aid survivors, then change to preserving technology, but it seems like that is no longer the case and the Brotherhood have reverted back to Roger's original goal of protecting people, which is something that's already happened once before. The Eastern Chapter, under the leadership of Elder Owen Lyons, started drifting away from their main goal of gathering technology in favor of helping the people of the Capital Wasteland, and it landed him in hot water with the Elders back west, because they were still following Roger's new goal of preserving knowledge so it wouldn't be lost. But they've been doing this for over 200 years. Surely, after all that time, the Brotherhood now has enough technology and knowledge to no longer fear losing it. So it could be time for the next step, the rebirth of civilization, which a Gek would really help with. Another questionable thing that appears in the trailer is an airship known as the Kaswanan. It looks a lot like the Pridwin, Arthur Maxon's airship in Fallout 4, but the confusion is where did the airship come from? Sometime after the Master was defeated by the Vault Dweller, the Brotherhood of Steel used Zeppelins to travel east, though, while crossing the mountains, the main airship was caught in a great storm and blew far off course. The damage caused by the storm had many parts of the ship stripped away, never to be seen again, and many of the air convoy leaders lost their lives. The command Zeppelin remained aloft thanks to the surviving crew members who managed to keep the wounded vessel aloft until it reached the outskirts of Chicago, where it finally crashed. After this, the Brotherhood didn't use airships again until the Pridwin. The airship was constructed by the Brotherhood of Steel at Adams Air Force Base. They spent two years on its design and another two years gathering the parts, with components salvaged from an aircraft carrier, some suspect Rivet City, paired with Enclave technology recovered from the mobile base crawler. While the airship itself is unarmed, it always carries enough troops, vertebrates, and supplies to mount a major assault. It also has all of the facilities needed to support long-range operations. A clinic, armory, barracks, you get the idea. If the Western Elders wanted to take LA, they would absolutely want one of these airships at their disposal. And since they know Arthur Maxon has one, which he'll never part with, they requested the blueprints to build their own, 
or had Arthur's chapter build and then send them a new one. As for the name of the new ship, the Brotherhood likes to borrow from Arthurian mythology, especially in Fallout 4 with Arthur Maxon and his airship, the Pridwin, referencing King Arthur and his ship, the Pridwin. Caswinan is said to be another name for Pridwin, although depending on the source, you may find the other name is Gwenan, whereas Caswinan is the name of the sandbank upon which Arthur wrecked his ship. But enough about that. Just know that the new airship was either made by the Western Elders using blueprints provided by Arthur Maxon, or it was made by Arthur's chapter and then delivered to them, which is why it looks identical. The most ridiculous thing in the entire trailer, which I'm sure we can all agree on, is the Cyclops, who thanks to the iconic circular window we know is an overseer. Since Hank, Lucy's father, is the overseer of Vault 33, then this has to be another vault. My guess is Vault 32 or Vault 4, since those are the other two vaults that have currently been mentioned. Mutations are normal in Fallout. If they wanted to show that the overseer was a mutant, then he should have had a third eye, or an extra limb like the funny animations. However, making the Overseer look like a Cyclops is unusual, and in my opinion, a bad choice. It would have been a lot better to have a third arm just out of sight, which the Overseer then uses to grab a cup, revealing he's a mutant. On to why he's a mutant, we don't know. It could be due to radiation getting inside the vault, or the result of a vault experiment. Perhaps genetic modification to help humans survive in the irradiated world only it didn't quite work. On the topic of mutations, I'm quite surprised we didn't get to see more of them in the trailer, but we did get to see radroaches, yaogwai, and what looks like giant axolotl. Radiation is the cause of giant insects and horrific looking bears, but there's something different about this new creature, and that's the rows upon rows of what appear to be human fingers lining the creature's mouth and throat. When you see human and animal parts together, there's only one thing that comes to mind. The forced evolutionary virus, or FEV. But the real questions are who made these creatures and where did they come from? In leaked images, we do see a van with the words Hawthorne Medical Laboratories written on the side. So far, the only thing we know about Hawthorne Medical Laboratories is it's a subsidiary of vault -Tec Corporation that specializes in medical research. Vault-Tec has allowed certain vaults to be used for FEV experimentation, Vault 87 for example, so this could be another instance of that. They could have been using FEV and axolotl, which are known for their regenerative abilities, to regrow human limbs. It could have been a pre-war experiment, focused on growing human limbs for the war effort, the resource wars, that is. But as of right now, there's little to suggest that is the case. Another question that comes to mind, is why now? Why haven't we seen these creatures before? Is someone creating them, or were they trapped and have only just surfaced, similar to tunnelers? Are the mutants part of vault -Tec's plan to take over? A first wave attack, similar to the Enclave using death claws, or the pre-war US using mole rats? We don't know, but I look forward to learning more about these creatures and why they were made. The last thing I want to address is the vaults themselves. The series will feature three vaults, each of which are interconnected in a yet unspecified way. Vault 33, 32, and 4. Both the purpose and location of Vault 4 is unknown, but we do know that Cooper appeared in an advertisement as the spokesman. Since one of the main characters knows the location of the vault, I think it's safe to assume that Vault 4 will be a part of the story, and my guess is whatever Lucy and the Brotherhood are searching for is inside Vault 4, and only Cooper can help them find it. Vault 32's role is also unclear. It was first known in 2022 via leaked images. However, I can't show them for legal reasons, apparently, that's just what it says. The first official appearance of Vault 32 in any show-related material was at the Fallout display at CCXP 2023. The display included an interactive vault tour with staff members wearing Vault 32 jumpsuits. The tour also included a game in which winners would be allowed to enter Vault 33 and the losers would be sent to Vault 32. 
If this is more than just a fun game, and is in fact what happened to those before the Great War trying to get inside Vault 33 or Vault 32, then I suspect the Overseer's ancestors lost the game and were sent to Vault 32, along with the rest of the losers, who were then turned into mutants for science. As for Vault 33, we know the location is next to Santa Monica Pier, but we don't know if it's a control vault or not. Though, there does seem to be some trouble in Paradise, as the residents can be seen fighting amongst themselves in the atrium, where they also seem to be growing crops. This space isn't generally used for this purpose, but since they are, this could mean the vault is running out of food, another problem a Gek would solve. The unusual thing about these vaults are they're still operational. During the Master's reign, he sent his super mutants to vaults within the area, as the prime normals inside made for excellent dipping subjects. But Vault 4, 32, and 33 were all missed, yet there is a superficial explanation. When asked if having a vault so close to the Unity's power base in the Boneyard was a good idea, one of the original developers, Jesse Heinig, said there's a number of possibilities as to how the Master could have missed a vault. The lack of information, his help being of little help, or the vault simply being better protected than the others that were opened. I hope this is explained in the show, a brief mention before opening the vault door, how several decades earlier someone tried to get inside the vault, but their defenses were too strong. Something along those lines anyway, showing how the master knew of the vault's location, but was unable to get inside, because I find it really hard to believe that Unity would miss such an obvious vault. It's not exactly hidden inside a cave, or beneath a building like the other vaults he found. Right now, it's difficult to say if the show will be good. Based on what we've seen, I'm going to say it looks promising. If the reasons for things being the way they are, the absence of the NCR in the Boneyard, the Master missing the vaults, the presence of a new airship, new mutants that were likely created with FEV, where that FEV came from, if all of that is explained and doesn't contradict or devalue the current lore, then there's nothing stopping the show from being a great addition to the Fallout universe. If you have any of your own theories as to why things are the way they are, then let me know because in a few months time the show is going to come out and it's going to be fun looking back and seeing just how close we were to figuring things out based on the little information we currently have. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you'd like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure.